Hey folks, how's everybody doing today? Happy Tuesday. Sorry for the delay here. This was a little bit of a rush getting back from my doctor's appointment. But I'm back. Whew. Things are good. My sugar's not too bad. So if I'm lucky, something else will kill me and not diabetes. So that's good news, right? Cheers. Uh, all right. So today we're going to talk about strings. We'll get through most of it. Um, we're not going to need too much time for the midterm re re midterm review, uh, but that's what we're going to do on Thursday. So we'll finish up what if we didn't get to here in strings, and then we'll work on the midterm review as well. So a couple things coming up due. Don't forget, we've got Project 2 due Thursday. Oh, that's right. So we're also going to talk about the solution to Project 2. We won't talk about Project 3 until after the midterm. I don't want to have two things on your plate at once. Uh, so we'll talk about that one next week uh, for the third individual project. The Chapter 5 and 6 quizzes are coming up due. Apologies um, for doubling up there. If you need a little extra time on those, um, that's fine. Uh, you want to get them in so I can get them graded before the midterm, though. So like, if you need another day or two, it's no problem on those. Yeah, Lab 4, definitely. Uh, we can take a look at that one. Uh, and then... Our functions lab again we can, we'll finish that one up next next time so yeah let's, let's we can look at the lab first yeah if you ever get stuck in the labs let me know that those are um honestly the the goal is everyone gets them done and that's our time where i can walk around and help you so if you're you're stuck on something that that's where i can actually take a look at your computers and then see what code you have and, and whatnot um, so if you're doing them remotely just let me know we can hop on a little screen sharing sh session whether or not zoom or discord uh, they both work pretty well and then I can actually see your code and, and go from there. Hey, we can talk about four. Uh, the the diamond part of four, or the um, standard deviation part of lab four, or both. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, so the, the first part of that is trying to find what is the relationship between the number of stars and the number of spaces and the size of your diamond. Excuse me. So... Let's see if I can draw this out here real quick. So we looked at, hey, if we had a diamond here, and we had one, and then three, and then five, right? and then three, and then one. So this is a size five, right? So if we did size here, right, we had five. Our first row had two spaces, the next row had one space, and then we had zero spaces. So you can see spaces are going down and then spaces are going up right? and then one space and then two spaces again so the number of diamonds right we start with one diamond right one diamond and then three diamonds and five diamonds and back down to three and back down to one so we have two spaces one diamond one space three zero spaces five diamonds one space three diamonds two spaces one so we can see right the number of spaces are decreasing by one where the diamonds increase by two and then we reverse we go up and this pattern fits no matter what the size is. So what we need to do is determine, well, how do we know how many spaces we have? Uh, so if we looked at a size seven diamond, then that was two spaces to start. Right, if we had seven, then we'd have one, three, five, seven. Right, so there's one, two, three spaces. Right? And if we did nine, you'd see there's four spaces and on and on and on. So you can see that it's half rounded down. Right? Or integer division. Right? The, the double slash um, to get an integer result of our division works out really well. So that's how we know how many spaces we need to start with. And we always start with one diamond. So let me start up a new project here for the lab. Call this lab four. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come on, pie charm. There we go. All right, so we were going to ask for their size, right? So our size was going to be an int of an input of what size diamond. Um, and then to check, right, if it's even or odd, we can do some quick little modulus. So if size divided by 2 is equal to 0, right, then it means it's even. If you can evenly divide out all the 2s, there's no remainder. Let's take size plus equal 1. We'll just add 1 to it. So if you gave me an even number, I'm just going to increase it by 1. Right, no big deal here. 
So just, a, a, you gave me a bad number, that's fine. We don't need to do any sort of other checking beyond that. So then our spaces, then, will equal the size integer division by 2, or floor division. Right? And then our stars will start at 1. And we're going to do this, um, right, oh, what size diamond here? We're going to do this until we reach the correct size. So we can say, we can do it with a while loop or a for loop. Either one's perfectly fine. Um, you know, with uh, a, a range and a for loop, uh, we'd have to go one plus the size to make sure we stop at size. But that's fine too. Or we can just do a while loop. So let's say while stars is less than or equal to the size. Let's print the spaces, right? A space character times the spaces, number of spaces. And then remember, we want to change the, the ending character here. You can change the end to equal just a nothing. So you don't go down another line when you print, right? Or we could do a formatted string. Uh, the formatted string is actually probably even easier here. So if you say, okay, let's do a little uh, formatted string here. We want the space character, right? Times the spaces. Oh, uh, shoot, that's not giving me anything. Not doing the substitution here. Yeah, we can look at lab five too, for sure. So, oh, it wasn't, why is this not formatting that we want? Okay, well, we'll do, we'll do a dot format. So we can take a string here. We're going to substitute in something. We'll substitute in something else format. And what we're going to format is the spaces times the space character and then stars times the star character. All right, so give me this many spaces and then this many stars. All right, we'll print that out. Then I need to take my stars plus equal two, my spaces minus equal one. Go down by one, go up by two. So just with this then, we ought to get the top half of our diamond. So if we say size five, I should get one, three, five. Looking good so far. So once that's done, now, this is um, something some people ran into, and that's okay, is that when this is done, the number of stars is now more than the size. So to get less than what we were, we need to take our stars and we need to subtract four. Because we went from five, we went up to seven. Seven is no longer less than size, the loop stops. So we're at seven, but by the next row, I only want three more. So I need to take off two sets there. And for spaces, then, we need to add two. Because we took away one space, we actually had negative spaces now. Right, we went from zero spaces, right, we printed out zero spaces, and now we have negative one space, so we need to add two to get one space back. And then I can do another loop, I can say, well, stars is greater than or equal to one, right, we're going to do this in reverse. Let's print this out. But this time I'm going to take away two stars and increase the number of spaces. So, again, size five, and we get a size five. Right again here, let's do like a size ten, we should end up with eleven. Right, so 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and then backwards in reverse. Right, so while loops I think are, are nice and easy for this. Uh, for loops are fine too if you wanted to do ranges, right, you know, for number of stars in range, something. But again, you'd have to go 1 plus where you wanted to end because the range stops before you get that last number, is all. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's no like equal to with the range. It's always less than with the range. But apparently, I need some more fluids. Okay, and then the next part, right, we were going to ask them to enter a bunch of numbers, right? So we're going to have, you know, number equals zero, and, you know, while number does not equal, I don't know, negative one, and, and, you know, a sensible value for that doesn't actually work all that well, because negative one could be a possible value. I don't know what they're entering, what values they're entering here. So we'll probably say, you know, I don't know, more to enter equals yes, and we'll say while more to enter equals yes. Right, let's ask them for more numbers. So we need to have a list of numbers then. So my numbers will equal a list, an empty list to start. And we'll ask for a number. So number equals an int of an input. I'll enter a number. And then I'll take my numbers. And I'm going to append the number in. And then we'll ask them. We'll say more to enter is an input of you have more numbers. Enter, like y slash n. Hopefully they'll enter a yes or no, 
here, right? And then we could even if we wanted to, right? We want we want to lowercase this here. You could say dot lower. So you compare the lowercase version of what they entered, or you can put it on the input here. Either one's fine, right? You know, either either case you could add that lower, which will lowercase the string. So I think we've looked at that. We're going to talk more about that again today in the string chapter. But I think we looked at that as a quick little check to make sure, right? Because we are case sensitive, that we need to lowercase those. Then once we're done, now we have my list of numbers. Now we need to find the standard deviation. So my average is going to be the sum of the, the numbers. Or we can get a sum real quick, divided by the length of the numbers here, right? Sum of the list, divided by the length. That's my average. Okay, then I need to find the sum of the differences of the squares, right? Oh my goodness, that's that's a big step here. So we need to get the running um, sum of that, and then we have to square root it. I, I always have to double check this here. Uh, standard deviation. No, not dv. I can't spell, friends. Standard deviation. Yeah, length is fantastic, Damon. And we're doing the population standard deviation because uh, we didn't tell them or give, say, give us a sample, right? So the population standard deviation is, here we go. You have the difference of the data and the mean, and then you take the average of those. Oh my goodness, okay. Right, so the average here, great, and then with the deviation, from the mean and square each one of those, we sum those up and take the square root of that to find our standard deviation. Okay? So for each number then, right, so for number in numbers, we need a, this is the what, total difference, is going to start off at zero. And I'm going to take my total difference and I'm going to add to it the number minus the average. Right, and that, then, I need to square, right, to the power of 2, right? So take that to the power of 2, add them all up, and then I'm going to average that, right? and then I'm going to take the square root of it. So this will add up, right, all the total differences, the total difference squared, 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 I don't know, is that even a word, squared, I don't know, that's fine. Hopefully that makes sense. Squareds. Okay. Then I've got the total. Then I need to take the total difference squared. Or we can even call it, right? It's the variance. is equal to the total difference squared divided by the length of the numbers. And then my standard deviation is equal to the variance. Square root of that, right? To the 0.5. Okay. Now I have the standard deviation. Okay, now that I have the standard deviation, now we wanted to calculate how many numbers fall within one, within two, and within three standard deviations of the mean. So again, we're going to loop through all the numbers, and we need to have a way to count all these things, right? So you can either put them into lists, or we could just have a counter here. So I, I might just say um, count of numbers within one standard deviation is zero, and I'm just going to repeat this here for one, for two, and for three. And two and within three standard deviation. So I maybe I need an S there, but sure. That's fine. I'm, I'm not gonna worry too much about being plural or not. Then we're gonna loop through our numbers again. Right? So we're gonna say for number in numbers, again, we're gonna see if it's within if it's within three, it's obviously within two and one. If it's not within three, is it within two? If it's within two, then it's within two and one. And if it's within one, then it's just within one. Right, so we need to check to see if it's within three standard deviations first here. Now there's, you know, we could either set up a variable or do the arithmetic, arithmetic every time. For our purposes, we don't care. It's a little slower to do the arithmetic every time rather than saying, here's a fixed number, let's calculate it once, but it's not too big of a deal. So we're gonna say if the number, and then we want to subtract the average, right? Minus the average. We want to, or no, we want to say if it's within, if it's greater than or equal to the average minus three times the standard deviation. So if we take the average 
and we subtract three standard deviations. Right? If the number is greater than that, oh my goodness, why can I not do math right now in my head? Um, that's if it's we want it to be between both of them here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay, so if it's greater than that, minus the 3, and its number is less... Okay, we can just sandwich it here then, right? So if it's less than or equal to that plus 3, plus 3, and it's less than... less than or equal to that minus. Does that look too terrible? That's a little terrible, but that's okay. Right, so if the... Average minus three standard deviations is less than the number, and the number is less than the average plus three standard deviations. We are within three standard deviations of the mean. Right? So I'm going to take each of these counts then, plus equal one, plus equal one, plus equal one. Right? Else if, if it's not within three, Let's see if it's within 2. Within 2 and 2 here, we're going to take 2 and 1 up. And if it's not within 2, let's check to see if it's within 1. So just minus the standard deviation, right, and plus the standard deviation. Either that, if it's within 1 standard deviation, right, if it's in between those, then we'll add to 1 here. Right? Now again, order of operations is going to make sure this works for me, because I'll get three times, I'm not going to take average minus three, you, you folks all know how math works here. Okay, and that's it. So if it's within three, it's within one, two, and three. If it's within two, it's within two and one. And if it's within one, it's within one. If not, there's nothing else. We don't, there's nothing else for us to do. And then we're done, we're going to print out um, the percentages here. So we'll say um, there are, um, sure, we can just format it in here. So that is the count of numbers within three standard deviations. No, within three. What? No, that was a bad copy paste. Within three standard deviations divided by the length of numbers. Right? Percent of numbers in three standard deviations. Sure. And we'll copy all that. And do it again. And do it again. Within two and within one. And if you wanted to, we could print out the rest of the numbers too. I don't think I asked you to print anything else, but, I'll, but we could. We could print the average. What was our average? And then maybe we, we can just do it right here. Standard deviation was the standard deviation. Just so we can kind of eyeball our numbers and see if that feels like a good fit here. Yeah, it's complaining the line is too long, but that's okay. I mean, it, it's a little long. Right, we'll give that a shot. No, not debug. That was wrong. I don't want to debug. Debugging is slower. Let's run. Let's run. Run. All right, what size diamond? Let's do a one size diamond. Sure, okay. So one, yes more. Two, yes more. Three, yes more. Four, yes more. Five, uh, no more. Oh, goodness. Uh, line 28, we crashed. Average int object is not iterable. Oh, sum of number instead of numbers. I have the typo here. Needed an S there. Numbers and numbers. All right, let's try that again. Try it again. One. All right, one. Yes. Two. Oh, I can't type, friends. I can't type. One size diamond. Okay, one. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Five. No more. So the average was three, right? Standard deviation of 1.41. Sounds good. 1% 1 of numbers. Oh, that's not looking right. Did it round? It, it's rounding for us. That's gross. Um, why is it rounding for us? That's some really weird rounding there. Uh, that's all right. We can uh, do some formatting here then. Right, colon 0.2f to say, yes, I want two decimal places here. 
Try that again. One, one, yes. Two, yes. Three, yes. Four. Oh, I did three again. Yes. Shoot. Four, yes. Five, yes. Oh, I did another number. Shoot. Six, yes. Seven, yes. No more numbers. Okay. Oh, well, that's still not giving us a good percentage here. Count divided by the length. Why is that not giving us a good percentage here? Divided by, it should give us a floating point number. All right, I'm unhappy with this. We're even telling it to format as a floating point number. Why? Tell me we want it as a float. All right, all right, that's fine. That's fine. Go, go the hard way. Point two F. Format. Given the arithmetic. Let's see if that works any better for us. One, one, yes. Two, yes. Three. Uh, no more numbers. Just one, two, three. Ah! Float? I still need the colon. Right? Yeah. Okay, that ought to do it here. I don't know why. Why is our substitution so bad here? Format with that. Really thought this would work here. Format. Format strings are sad. All right, let's try that one more time. Yeah, there's a couple steps here to, to calculate some of this stuff, but one, yes, two, yes, three, no more numbers. Oh my goodness. Why is it telling me one? Right. If the average is two, then they should not all be within one standard deviation of the mean. They should all be within three. Okay, so maybe my counts are wrong? I'm so confused, friends. Standard deviation looks right. All right, let's put it in debug mode, because I don't know what's happening here now. Let's see what those values are before we actually go do this. I'll give it one, two, and three here in a second. One. One. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. No more. All right, here we go. So it counted all three. Okay, so something got screwed up here then. If our standard deviation... Our average was 2, standard deviation was 0.8. They should not have all been within. If it's within 3, I have this backwards, friends, that's why. Um, if it's within 3, yeah, okay, yep, yep, okay, this is backwards here. So I need to check if it's within 1, then if it's within 2, then if it's within 3. And I'm counting these totally backwards here. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Okay. Forgive me here. Oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Just grab them all. Grab them all here. Yep, check if it's within one. No, what are you doing here? Friends. Yeah, I'm in a, like a weird insert mode. What happened? It's on multi-cursor. Why is it on multi-cursor mode? Oh, goodness. Column selection mode. No. Okay. That's what it was doing. I don't know how I turned that on. That's super weird. Okay, if it's within one, it's within one. 
and within two and within three. That's what I had backwards here. That was totally wrong here. I'm sorry. If it's within one standard deviation, obviously it's within two and three. If it's within two standard deviations, then it's within two and three standard deviations. Two and three. That's why all my arithmetic was wrong there. And then if it's within three, it's just within three. Otherwise, nothing else. All right. All right, I'm going to put this back because I like those other formats anyway. I think this is uglier. Is this is this too ugly? That's all right. I'm going to I'm going to change it anyway. Put this back as a formatted string because they are so much prettier here. That would explain why that was all happening. The debug mode is your friend. Then three. Within two, within one. Let's get rid of this dot format stuff here. Go away, dot format. There we go. All right. Now that ought to work a little happier here. Now we're checking in the correct order for the actual right thing. If you're within one standard deviation, you're also within two and three. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I know how math works occasionally. <laughs> All right, one, one, yes, two, yes, three, yes, four, yes, five, no more numbers. So if our standard deviation is 1.4, right, from three, let's see, three, yep, so all of them, 100% of them, are a number, okay, so if we're doing 0.2f, Really, then I want to multiply that by 100, then. Right? That'll give me better percentages. Times 100. Then I'll say 100%. Here, and I'll just get rid of the... Uh, uh, yeah, just multiply by 100. I guess, uh, you know, sure. Point zero f We want no decimal places. One, maybe. Right, because we just want the percentage here, that ought to work here. Okay, so 100% of the numbers are within two standard deviations, which makes sense, because within two standard deviations, two of 1.4s are definitely with between 1 and 5. But only 60% of our numbers are within one standard deviation, right? 2, 3, and 4. Let's run it one more time. Give us some other numbers here, see if it makes any sense. Let's do 1. All right, 1. Yes, 1. Yes, 1. Yes, 1. Yes, and then 100. Yes, 100. Oh, 10. Yes, 100. Yes, 100. No more numbers. So if our standard deviation is 47 from an average of 40, 62% right, of them are within 1. Okay, right? All the ones that were 1s are within, and the 10, but the 100s are not. 100% 100 of them are. Okay, I think we're doing all right. What do you think? Do we accomplish the goal for lab four? That took a little longer than I thought it would. Apologies. Let's come back here. You said you want to look at lab five there, CK or KC. So lab five, part two. Was our scramble function. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was fun. So when we scramble something the idea here let's see um let's uh let's write out a word here so um beef and cheddar so if we look at this as a string here right all of these are indexes in the string right so we get zero one two three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, this one's a little long here. Let's let's do something a little shorter. Sorry. Um, how about how about beef pot pie? Yeah, that's not quite as long. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is eleven characters long total. 
right? So if I'm going to skip every two, I'm going to take zero and two and four and six and eight and 10, put those in order. So I'm going to get B, E, a space, O, P, E. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to start at character one. I'm going to skip by two again. So one, three, five, seven, nine. I'll get E, F, P, T, I. So this is my scramble with a skip two given beef pot pie. Okay, but if I wanted to skip three here, right? This is the idea of if we can change up the skips. I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to skip three. I'm going to go from zero to three to six to nine. And then there's no more. I'm done. So what I'm going to get then is the B, the F, an O, an I. And I'm going to come back to the next possible number. So the next starting number is one. I'm going to get one, four, seven, ten. So I'm going to get... Um, E O F I, that's an I there, okay. I'm gonna get E, a space, a T, and an E, and we come back to the next starting character. I'm gonna get two, five, eight. Two was E, five was P, eight was P. So we've scrambled at different skips. Right? We could skip four, we could skip five, we could skip six, we could skip seven, on and on and on and on. So what has to happen then, right? There's essentially two loops that happen. The first one is we're going to start from zero up to the skip as a range. Okay, and each one of those will be our starting one. And from there, we're going to feed that to another range. We're going to go from the, the start. We're going to go to the length of the word, right? The length of the word. And then we want to go by the skip. Remember with uh, ranges, you can have a skip value. Uh, so let me start up one more project here. We'll call this one Lab 5. So that one was going to be a function. So this was uh, define a function. This was, we were going to call it scramble. Scramble, given a word and the skip. Okay, so we're going to say for index in range... I guess this is, the, I don't know, we'll call this the start, call it start index in range. We're going to start at zero. We want to go up to the skip value, right? Because that will get, if I'm skipping three, it'll give me zero, one, and two, which are the different start values. And then for each one of those, then I need a, oops, a scrambled, scrambled word. We're going to start off as an empty word, right? Then for that start index, we're going to go through another range. We'll take for index in range. Oh my goodness, range starting at the start index, right? So I start at zero or at one or at two or three, whatever we say here, right? I want to go up to the length of the word, which will give me up to the last index. Because if the word is 11 characters, I'll get zero through 10. If I start at zero, in this case, we're going to start at the start index. And I want to go by, right, that third option, you know, how many times do we want to count? Do we want to go by ones, by twos, by threes? What if we want to go by the skip? I can take my scrambled word and I can add to it the word at the index. And I can return that scrambled word. We can call scramble given beef pot pie and three, and it's going to return the word so we could print it out, right? Or we could even do some more fun things. We could say for um, scramble, I don't know, or I don't know, skip in range. And we want to go from two to say, I don't know, like seven. I don't know. Sure, why not? Uh, that'll give us two through six then, right? Let's print the scramble, given the skip. We can look at it, given a skip two, given a skip three, given a skip four, given a skip five. And we can also do that sanity check, right? If skip was less than or equal to one, we'll just return the word, right? If you're every letter, you're not actually scrambling anything here. This is that sanity check here. Sanity check, okay? So let's print it out. So here is scramble two, scramble three, Scrambled four, scrambled five. Hey, thanks so much for following along, Adam Fighter. Right? And eventually, if we get too high, right, it's just not going to do anything for us. We're not going to have any values here at all. If we get beyond the length of the word, right, if, if our skip goes up too high, so like if we did skip up to um, 12, which would end up at a skip 11, we're going to beef pop high back out. Right? Because at a skip 11, there's nothing to skip. Right? You take the first character, and you go jump 11, there's nothing left. So, we get nothing else. 
right? It's less and less scrambled. So at, at some point, there's a probably a, a good level of scramble here where this makes sense. And again, it depends what you're you're scrambling, right? The longer your your word is, or it could be a sentence or a paragraph or an essay, right? It could be whatever you want here, right? You know, we, we can scramble them different ways. Does that make sense? There, CK, KC. I'm, I can't can't figure out words, friends. So the first loop here then, right, we're going from, this is the starting character. So we want to start at zero, because we want to say, okay, give me, we're always going to start with the first character. We're always going to start at index zero. And then I'm going to start with index zero and skip some values, skip some values, skip some values until I get to the end, right? So if we were skipping by three, we'd go zero to three to six to nine, and then we're done. Now we need to come back and go to the next available starting position. We're just increasing our start by one. So we're at one, one to four to seven to ten. We're done. Now we come back. Our next start position is two, two to five to eight, and then we're done. Because we know I get as many different starting characters as I have skip values. Right. So if I'm skipping by threes, I'm going to have zero, one, and two. If I'm skipping by fives, I'm going to get zero, one, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah, because it will stop. Remember, the a range will stop. It does not get to the value at the end. It's up to, but not including this last value. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So again, you know, we're, it's a function, but it's still, we're, we're taking advantage and, and practicing the earlier things that we've learned. Um, you don't get to forget anything, unfortunately, just like math class. Um, like calculus is really just a mean trick to make sure you know your algebra. Um, you're not allowed to forget any of your algebra. Okay, so let me, uh, I'll commit those real quick, so you got them for reference. Hey, happy to talk about the labs anytime, um, and the goal is that, uh, you know, you get them done. Um, and that, that's that's your chance to practice here, so. Did I not, I never committed that? Oh no. Man, that was back from Thursday? Oh, friends, I'm all messed up. I'm all messed up here. Okay, so let me push that, and I'll go to our repo. One, let it go. Here's lab four and five examples. Get those. And I'll start a new project. So we'll, finally, we're going to talk about strings. New project, uh, chapter seven, strings. Open in this window, close all the other stuff behind, hit and push. All right, we got it out there now. Awesome. So, um, okay, yeah, it's new project, new project. So there's actually a lot of really cool things you can do with strings, um, which is fun. There's a lot of built-in functions and things that we can do with them. Uh, we've looked at some of those methods already before. Like we said, hey, I want to take my string uppercase or my string lowercase. Um, we looked at a little bit of formatting for our strings here. So the, the other thing that we can do with strings um, Oh, hang on. Where did it go? I got too many windows open here. There we go. That's better. Is a hat. You got it, Bendawi. Yeah. I've got the uh, original OG chess streamer cap here. Shout out to the chess bras. Um, no, they don't sponsor the stream, but, um, you know, maybe someday they might, right? <laughs> They'll be big enough to sponsor other people. <laughs> Hey, Dodo. Happy Tuesday, my friend. So, um, a thing that you can do, which is really cool with strings, and we're going to see it actually works with any sort of um, list or sequence type, here is called slicing. Um, so we've done before, so we had like the alphabet. We said that was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, here. And we said, okay, I wanted to take a single character. So, E then would be the alphabet at index five, no, four, because it's the fifth letter, right? Now this is fine getting one character out at a time, but what we could do if you wanted to get more here, you can get actually a slice of those values. 
So we could say, hey, here's some letters is equal to the alphabet, and let's take a, uh, let's go from 5 colon to 10. So I want to get all the characters from index 5 up through, but not including 10. Uh, Dodo, uh, I took a class in assembly. That's about as low level programming as I, or I think as you can get, probably. Uh, but just a single class, and I've never done it professionally. Um, not not anything I'm claim, claim to be good at. Thank you for the posture reminder. No, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, very interesting um, how all this magic happens behind the scenes. But um, as a, a software engineer, I much prefer higher level languages. Um, well, there's some cool stuff you can do with assembly, though. So anyway, the slice will say start at index 5. Give me all the characters through index 10, um, not including 10. All the characters up, to, how about up to, to index 10. So we'll get 5, we'll get 6, we'll get 7, we'll get 8, and we'll get 9. We're not going to get 10. Right, so that should be F, G, H, I, J. Right, so if we print out the letters here, we're going to take a slice of the alphabet here. Right, F, G, H, I, J. Oh yeah, linear algebra. That's supposed to be a lot of fun. You know, I never had a class in physics. Um, I had different uh, science electives. Although physics, physics uh, seems like a lot of fun. All right, I'm out of coffee, friends. That's a bad sign. Uh, definitely going to need some more. So getting a slice of them. My goodness, my sugar's not going down. I guess that happens. That's what happens when you drink a lot of. Uh, Coffee and eat stuff. Oh yeah, you can do a lot of cool linear algebra stuff. Um, yeah, I think most of the libraries do it for you, but you probably want to understand what it's doing kind of behind the scenes or why it's doing what it's supposed to be doing here uh, with that. So the, the slice is going to give us um, essentially a copy of what's in there, which is really fun. And then you can do other cool things with your slices. Um, Similar to what you can do with ranges. So kind of think of it as like a shortcut for ranging. So a similar way of doing this, right? This is the slow way letters would like be starting off at an empty string. And then we'll say for index in range 5, 10, take slow way letters plus equals my alphabet at the index. Right? So I don't know if this is any easier to think about it, but this is essentially what it's doing. It's going through starting at 5, up through but not including 10, taking out each character at a time. Right, So this is a slice. Slice of the indexes here, and this is doing it one index at a time. So slicing is going to be faster for you. Um, right? Instead of doing it one at a time, again, adding to strings is, is really slow and bad. So um, generally, the slicing is better. And since it's essentially like a range here, we can do a couple cool things. Um, you can take, let's do a, um, um, know, last four letters, and we'll say that's my alphabet. And now if I just want the last four letters here, what I want to do is I want to say, um, well, I want to start at the length of the alphabet, and I want to subtract five from it, right, because the length, there is no index, so minus 5, right, will give me back 5, and then colon, uh, technically either side of this is optional, so, if, but if I want to, I could say, hey, to the length of alphabet here, uh, but that is optional, so that we can print the last four letters. The input blank in range n. Ranging through an input. For a given number? Yeah. Yeah, ranges are great. You can do a lot of cool things with them. So you can, you know, go back from... Uh, oh, I printed the letters backwards, right? Oh, I wanted f four. I went back too far. Nope. Four, 
Let me try that again here. So that should give me 26. Yeah, 26 minus 4 would be 22. So I'll get 22, 23, 24, and 25. I can't hold up the right number of fingers. That'll give me the last five letters here. So you can do the exact same thing, too, if you just leave off this. Right? So the start and end are optional. So if you leave off the start, it starts at zero. If you leave off the end, it ends at the end. Right? So omitting start, start at the beginning, the beginning, omitting the end means end at the end. Okay, so those ones are pretty nice. You can do that. Uh, the other really cool thing you can do is you can use negative values. Right, so I could say, hey, I want um, I don't know, the first 10 letters is going to be the alphabet starting at beginning. So we're just leave that one blank. And if I want the first 10, then I want to get negative, what is that, uh, 16 characters. So say go 16 back from the end. So that's 16 less than the end. Now, there's no negative zero. So like, Negative one, it means one, everything but the last character here. So then we'll print our first 10 here. So we should get, is that 10 characters? 10 characters. So uh, PyCharm tells you it's real small right down here. It says 10 characters. Kind of hard to see. Although you don't have to come out yourself. So you can do all sorts of fun things like this when you do slices. You can also, because it's a range, you can give it a stride, right? That, that same or the skip value. So if you want every other letter, we can say that is the alphabet from beginning to the end. And then a third option then of the stride is to say every two. So it's start, end, and I, I like skip. They say stride. I don't know. Either one's fine. Skip, stride. Sure. And then we can print every other letter. So every other letter. Now, most people wouldn't be able to do this off the top of their head, but, you know, A-C-E-G-I-K-M-O-Q-S-U-W-Y. Wow, that's kind of cool. I would not be able to say every other letter in the alphabet. That, that would be a terrible sobriety test. Um, I feel like that's awfully difficult. So you can take slices, all sorts of cool slice notation. Um, and it turns out this slicing notation actually works with lists. We're going to talk more about that next chapter when we talk more about lists. Uh, just keep that in your back pocket, that this slicing thing works for lists as well. So lots of cool ways to get different values out of strings here with our slices. All right, looking at some more formatting. Um, yeah, you can format things, that's fine. You can do named formatting. Again, I'm not a big fan of that because the formatted string is like just so much better. Um, the alignment is cool. Um, doing center aligned, left aligned, right aligned. Um, you got some cool alignment options. You can fill with different characters. You know, sure. Um, not, not too concerned about that particular format. You just look through it and see the precision is much more interesting with like that colon 0.2f or whatever here to do the automatic rounding for us. Um, but again, the dot format method is great. There's nothing wrong with it, but the formatted string where you can do the interpolation is just so much easier. So where we say like, hey, I want to print, um, here's a formatted string, the first four letters, or no, first what? First 10 letters are, and then just in the braces here, we'd say first 10 letters. With an interpolated string, the formatted option, then right is using that as a placeholder and then saying dot format given what we're formatting. And this one just goes in order. So you can have multiple substitutions here. Uh, but this interpolation is just so much easier to, to kind of read and follow. Definitely a, a bigger fan of the string interpolation. And you can do all the same formatting stuff. You can do the centering, you can do the, the, the widths, um, left align, right align, padding, uh, any of those sorts of things, which are fun. We'll get our same results. Okay, so string formatting is cool. All right, other string methods. Some other cool things we can do. Um, you can find a given character in a string here. Um, and it will tell you where it is 
or a negative one. So if it doesn't exist, it'll give you a negative one. So we get to have someone enter some kind of value and then look to see if it contains given characters. You can find given a start, you can find given an end, you can find in reverse. You can just count how many times a character comes up. Lots of different fun things you can do with characters. Um, you know, comparing strings, you can technically um, use greater than or less than with comparing strings. It's not super common, uh, but the in operator is really fun. So we can say um, if, I don't know, I don't know, like, um, how about if mon is in Pokemon? And we'll print, gotta catch them all. So you can use the, the membership operator because it's a sequence type. It says, hey, does this sequence exist in this sequence? In this case, this should be true, right? Because there is an MON in order in this string here. So using in is pretty fun, um, but it is case sensitive as well. Um, a couple things you can check to see whether or not a character is a given digit, uh, or I'm sorry, if it is a digit or if it's alphanumeric, if it's uppercase, if it's lowercase, if it's a space, lots of things there. So we could say, hey, if, um, I don't know, ASDF um, dot is alpha, is saying, hey, it's all alphabetic characters. It has no numbers, or it's alpha and numeric, or is just a digit, or if it's lowercase, if it's decimal, um, is numeric, if it's a space, if, it, if it's title case, if it's uppercase, all sorts of fun things you can check on strings. Um, and the Xilabs are gonna take you through ad nauseum doing some of these. Um, so there's not a ton of practice we need to do on strings, so I don't feel a bit too bad using our string lab time to do the midterm. Uh, the Xilab will have you practice until you're sick of them. Right? You can capitalize a string, you can lowercase, you can uppercase. Strip is really handy. We'll take up any leading or trailing white space. So if you're getting some input and we want to check it against something, sometimes people have weird spaces. Uh, they might en enter a beginning space or an ending space. So the strip method will remove those. Um, you can title case word strings. Yeah, there's all sorts of fun practice there. Um, and then, you know what, we've got one last bit on strings here with strings splitting and joining. Why don't we wait on that until Thursday? Um, and we can go from there, because we'll have a little bit of more string to talk about here. And we can call that good. So left off at 7.4. Put that to GitHub here. So here's some string strings. Sure. Commit and push. And I think we'll call that good for a day. Um, go, go ahead and make sure you're getting the practice in in your Zybook. Oh, stretch, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, don't want you to get behind on this because it does take up an awful amount of time. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, but it's like free points for essentially reading your textbook, which is, I think, a pretty good deal. So it looks like we're only 7% of the class has completed the Xilabs for chapter six. Only 17% of the participation, that's just like clicking on, yes, please show me this illustration here, has been done. Uh, so, uh, definitely looks like the majority of the class is getting behind on some of these things. And you don't wanna get behind and have to do all of it at the end of the semester while you're trying to do finals and, and prep for things like that. So please uh, work ahead, or no, not even work ahead, just stay on time uh, with these sorts of things, right? Uh, that's your goal there. Uh, we've got extra time in our regular Monday labs. You know, start working on the Zybook stuff, and we can go from there. So any other questions, thoughts, or concerns? How are you folks doing? I'm going to put on my ending screen here, and we'll go find somebody out in Twitch land to raid for funsies, because that's always fun. Let's see who's around. Uh, we've seen Obather a lot already. Let's see who else is around. I don't see anyone else in Knowledge Fellowship on right now. Yeah, thanks so much for hanging out, Bendowie. Um, ooh, Stephen Wolfram is on. I don't know if we can raid his channel, though. Uh, the Prime Prime again is really funny. Uh, really interesting. If you're into, to Vim, we'll, we'll see if we can head over there. A uh, fun programmer. Yeah, okay, looks like it's going to take us there. So we'll go hang out there, have some fun. You folks take care. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. If not, I will see you on Thursday. Take care, folks.